Hey everybody, it's Matt Powers. Welcome. I am making some crazy compost. It is spike compost. It is probably different from anything you have seen me do prior. It is unlike anything that anyone has taught me to do, but it's something that I've been tinkering with in the background for a while and I wanted to share and showcase with you. So it's a hot composting method. I'm gonna be turning this. I want this to be really hot at first. There's a lot of excess carbon on top that I'm gonna be turning into the pile to kind of like cool it down. But I want an initial hard start to this. It's a little cold outside here in Texas right now, but this site, this suburban site that we're on, as you can see, this suburban site really needs soil and it really needs to start off this season focused on building soil on this site. So everything I'm teaching in my courses, I'm applying and showcasing here on the site. I'm gonna be doing earthworks, I'm gonna be doing compost, doing cover crops, but in the way that I do them in the regenerative soil way so this compost is no different it's a spiked compost so at two different points i'm going to uh, spike the compost with specific inoculants and the thing about compost is that it's an incredible carrier people talk about biochar as an incredible carrier well you put your biochar in your compost it actually speeds up your composting process and just like manure speeds it up it's another way to speed up the process of decomposition and it stimulates microbes because it holds water and it has a very high surface area. Like clay, rock dust, biochar, all of these have a high surface area. Dried manures have a high surface area. The seaweed, the powdered kelp, high surface area which actually amplifies and increases the microbial action. So you're gonna see me play on that throughout this, but I also do this thing where I, I nest the biology in very particular ways, and I'm also using compost from other people as biological inoculant initially. So I've got compost that's in inoculating the pile, in the beginning, I'm going to have biofertilizers like mycorrhizae, rhizobia, all sorts of things that are going into the pile later. And that and and the amazing thing about inoculants, if they're meant to survive over winter and be in the soil when the plant plants regrow from seed, then these things persist. So they at least persist 12 months to to 18 months is what I've read in the literature, which makes a ton of sense. So I'm gonna be spiking it then as well. So as you can see here, I've got an incredible array of ingredients. We have wool, which is a great compost ingredient. It's got a lot of protein, got a lot of nitrogen in it. It holds water really well. And in it, it's like an insulator, right? And it's also condenser. For, for, for moisture and captures moisture as it travels upward from lower in the pile. And then we have alfalfa. Alfalfa is just a secret within the composting commercial community. They use it to amp up their piles. And uh, I have a theory as um, uh, bi biologically that uh, the biology that's inside the alfalfa is actually influencing the pile in very specific ways. So there's, uh, and, and this is still just a theory that I, that I have to uh, use my DNA sequencing equipment here at home to test, but I wanna see inside the alfalfa and I wanna see who's there in terms of the biology. So I'm gonna do an isolation um, of that and I'm gonna test that. And then we're gonna test the pile later on and we're going to run those against each other and we'll be able to see 
<laughs> if that biology most likely came from the plant that went into the compost pile, which is something that I'm I'm really wanting to prove out to myself and do multiple times to prove out to myself and then um, showcase that to the world. But the way that this works, the way that I'm building this pile, the way that I'm layering it, I know that this works. This is proven. This is something I've done. The surface area of the different ingredients really matters. I have biochar here. I've got kitchen scraps. I've got old compost. This is aged biochar-based forest scrap compost. And then I've got powdered manure bat guano. And then I have insect frass. And then I've got regular hay right it doesn't need to be straw it can be hay because it can have the seeds because we're going to heat it up so that the seeds will be burned out and the seeds actually will help us with this reaction and then of course we have the greens the freshly cut grasses weeds plants that are freshly cut while they're still green before they form seeds this is an essential part of this process and then we have dried kelp, which is great surface area and has all the plant essential nutrients that we need. It's an incredible addition to any kind of compost. Microbes love it. So I have that and then I have EM, of course. And then we also have catalyst bio amendments, compost that I'm gonna be adding in, which is like the primo compost. I'm going to be adding in this mushroom block. This mushroom block is lion's mane mushroom, but when you digest fungi, it actually requires fungi to do it for the most part. And when you do that, woody substrate gets broken down, you actually raise the fungal numbers in your pile. So these are the ingredients I'm going to combine them in thin layers, but I'm going to do it strategically so that I nest in moisture and biology in, in and have these nests that are kind of cocooned around the most biologically rich and water holding around the core. And this is important because we want the bottom, the base to breathe and the sides to breathe, but the core to, to be more connected. And so that we keep it aerobic, we get it hot, and it creates this just like a classic vortex of heat in your in a stove or a rocket stove. You have the heat pulling up or, a, or just a campfire. It's a toroid of, of energy around it, and the air is pulling up. And so that's essentially what we're doing here with this compost heap. And so you'll see me just keep going layer after layer, layer after layer. I'm gonna let it all play out. I want you to see you know, uh, an unedited step-by-step -step view of exactly how I'm making my compost. Full transparency, nothing hidden. This is the full story. I didn't add anything else. The water has been sitting for several days so that the chlorine has gassed off and I'm only adding enough so that it wets it and can absorb. I don't want it to actually dribble water because of how much I added to this pile. I really wanna add just enough to begin the process of heating up. And so this is kind of tricky, right? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna get back there very soon, as soon as it starts heating up, and add a little bit more more moisture. Not too much because it will actually cool it down. So, so the, and the reason I'm doing this is because I don't wanna lose all that value, all the nitrogen, all those things that are in there, I want to remain there. But, I, but once they're incorporated, once they're sticking, once it's starting to heat up, the moisture will be more readily absorbed. Things are opening in that heat. Things are splitting. The fibers are coming apart. The cellulose in the heat is becoming these really cool little spirals under the microscope because it's going sprung and coming apart and just splitting in that heat. So everything's opening up. You're adding moisture in strategically 
so that you're matching that heat so you don't lose any of the nutrients. And it also, you know, is a little bit of a governor on your heat, which can be really good when you're doing the pile the way I'm doing here, because this is the kind of pile that will get out of control for some people. It will get too hot. This is an advanced pile. <laughs> I knew that this was going to be like me gunning the engine and that's okay. I'm starting it off really hot. I'm going to be nailing it with the carbon topper that I put on this. But as it stands with that carbon topper, I'm prepping it. And what's going on is actually that carbon topper is getting more heavily loaded um, as the microbes and, and VOCs and other things and moisture is coming upward onto it. But it, 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 it's actually creating pull. It's just like uh, the, the, the top of, uh, of a rocket stove or a solar pipe um, can suck with the heat. That's creating because it's, there's more aeration there. So it, it's going to, to pull that oxygen in there, going to kind of blow on those embers, the heat in there, which is the micro microbial action and it's going to just take off. And then it's gonna be on me to turn it really well. I'm really excited about this. This is the compost heap that's pretty expensive, right? I've used so much EM, but I made the EM myself. So it's not something that cost me very much. The biochar was given to me, the compost, some of it was given to me, the bales of straw, the alfalfa I had to buy. Not that expensive. The manures, the insect frass, those are purchases, absolutely. The kelp, that was a major purchase. All these things that went into it made this pile an investment. There's a lot going on in here. And I don't want someone who's, you know, hasn't done something like this before and dealt with a super hot, I mean, it's like cooking on high heat. <laughs> You have to be watching this thing. You have to be paying attention. And when it's time, you have to turn it. You have to add enough moisture at just the right times. So I'm going to be out there. I'm going to be monitoring this. I'm going to be adding water to it later tonight. And, and this is a kind of a pile that you really have to watch. But the end result is going to be incredibly rich compost and it's going to be mineral rich compost. So it's going to revitalize the soil on all points. It's going to have the minerals. It's gonna have the biology. It's going to have the plant growth hormones. It's going to have the biofertilizers, the mycorrhizae in other words, the rhizobacteria in other words, the endophytes in other words. It's gonna have all the components necessary for that soil to be the best possible soil starting out for the first season after we make all these earthworks and change the whole way that water's handled on the site, because a lot of water passes through this site. So we wanna, uh, we wanna slow things down, we wanna store the water, we don't want our soil running away, and we want to build the site up. We're gonna be planting a lot of perennials, it's gonna be very beautiful, they're already on their way, so uh, we gotta get moving. So this is the urban site that we're transforming here in Texas, just south of Austin. So there's a lot of water in this area. So managing it properly is necessary. But at the same time, we want to build the soil. We want to bring the, the pH closer to pH 7, acidify the soil somewhat, in other words. That means more fungal compost. That means more biologically coherent and mineral coherent compost being added to the soils to bring that life that's necessary to bring those minerals that were missing that were leached out or blocked through antagonism this compost is going to do all of those things all at once and this is not the first pile i've done this way and this is not the last pile for this site that i'm going to do this way i have another cage down the hill i'm going to be doing one there and Together, these composts and the future compost that I'm just going to get on a train of doing compost. The next compost is going to be dominated by mushroom substrate. So this is just part one of crazy compost. I'm going to continue posting updates of this pile to show you what I mean by the heat, to show you what I mean by turning and watering and all that, because this is what happens. You, you, you get to a point where you're not measuring. You're doing it by hand. You're doing it by feel. 
you understand the principles at work better than the cookie cutter directions and formulaic directions that exist out there that don't make perfect sense, that don't get amazing results. This is what happens when you learn regenerative soil, when you understand things from a principle and cyclical and natural place first. So if you like this sort of thing, please check out Regenerative Soil, the online course that starts Monday. Learn how to make incredible compost. Learn how to improvise with soil, microbes, with composting, with it all. Learn to understand soil, micro to macro, microbial to the enzyme, to the minerals, to the ions, all of it working together with clarity and confidence. You'll be able to do all this stuff that I'm doing. Click the link down below and learn more. I'm Matt Powers. Grow abundantly, learn daily, and live regeneratively. And subscribe if you haven't. Thanks, guys.